Chris Shahzad here. Welcome to Mailbox Spoken English Channel, and thank you so much for joining me in this video. This is the wish of all the teachers that they want to teach in the classroom very effectively, and uh, they want their teaching to happen in such a way that is very interesting for the kids. At the same time, it's very very easy for the teachers also. And to make the teaching very easy for the teachers, teachers are always trying to make the lesson plans. They are trying to make the lesson plans in such a way that it's easy and comfortable for them to make also, and at the same time to follow also. So today in this video, we are also going to discuss about the lesson plans, and we'll see how we can make our lesson plans easy for the teachers. How we'll see how we can make it easy for follow also and easy to make it. So watch this video until end so that you can understand thoroughly how to make a lesson plan effectively for the effective teaching. Friends, for the effective lesson plans, there are few components which you really have to consider. For example, the very first thing for your effective lesson plan is to decide your SLOs. SLOs are actually called uh, students' learning outcomes. So outcomes means this is the result or this is the end result of the overall learning which is taking place in the classroom. So this is a skill. This is a main concept. This is the main content, or this is the main topic you are going to teach to the student. So why SLO is very important for uh, effective learning and effective teaching in the classroom. The reason is that it's the main theme of the lesson you are going to teach, or this is the main idea you are going to discuss with the students. And uh, this is why it's also very important for the teachers to uh, plan their SLOs in a proper way. They should press spend a proper time on deciding what should be the effective SLO for the kids. And while you're deciding your SLOs, it's very important to differentiate between objectives and the aims. Because sometimes when the teachers are writing down their SLOs, they write down their aims. And aim is something which you can achieve within the same class. So this is why it's very important to uh, uh, you can say write down the SLOs as SLOs which you can achieve within the class. For example, let me tell you an example. I have seen this, uh, lesson plans of some teachers and uh, they have written uh, in their lesson plans that um, students will be able to learn grammar in my class today. So learning grammar is uh, not very easy to learn within 14 minutes of your period. So learning grammar is a whole life thing that you're going to spend, uh, for which you're going to spend a longer time to learn actually. So grammar is a very big thing you can't learn within the same class. So actually grammar is your aim of teaching and grammar is aim of learning for kids. At the same time when you're talking about objectives, objectives are actually the short term and these are actually your SLOs which are going to achieve within the class uh, within the 40 minutes on that day. So this is why uh, always whenever you're going to write down your SLOs, write down your SLOs uh, which you can achieve within the classroom. So for this we say that your SLOs should be smart. So smart like you people, smart like rules of smart people. So not really like that, but I'm saying, uh, I'm talking about how to make the SLOs smart. So smart SLOs means uh, S for specific, M for measurable, A for achievable, R for realistic, and T for time bound. So it means that all the SLOs which are deciding for the classroom, uh, they should be specific. Specific means they should be taken from the topic or the lesson you're going to teach today, or they should be taken from that unit which you're going to teach or you're going to start today. So uh, this is how you're going to make your SLO specific. Number two, it's measurable. Measurable means your SLO should be achievable within the same uh, 40 minutes of time. And you can measure them. Measure means you can easily uh, measure how much students have learned in that period, how much is left to learn for the next day. For example, if you're going to teach the students uh, definition and the examples of the nouns or pronouns or any uh, parts of speech, uh, you, uh, your main SLO is that the students will be able to uh, tell the definition of nouns. Second SLO is students will be able to uh, tell five examples of uh, nouns. For this, you are going to see that is it measurable now. So how would you see that this is measurable? You will ask the definition to the students at the end of the lesson and assessment stage. 
uh, that tell the definition of the nouns. So if the students can tell the definition of the nouns, it means that this is this objective you have achieved. So if you say to the students, okay, tell me five examples of the noun, and this is where if the students can tell the five examples, they just tell about one example or two examples, or maybe the students are unable to tell the example. So it means that you have achieved your one objective and one objective is left. So uh, at the same time, you can also see that how effective definition or how correct definition the students have told you. So if you feel that the students have told 100% correct definition and you feel that the students have told all the correct five examples of the nouns, it means your objective of that day are achieved. So it means that your, your objectives should be measurable. And the third thing is the achievable, which, which we have discussed so far when we were taking the last examples. Achievable means you should be able to achieve your objectives within the same class. For example, we took the example of the grammar and then we took the specific example of the nouns and uh, definition and the uh, examples. If you say that the students will be able to achieve uh, learn grammar in the class today, so it means that learning grammar is a long-term objective which, it, which can't be achieved within the same 40 minutes you are going to spend today in the classroom. So it means that learning grammar is a long-term objective which is not actually achievable. But if you say that the students will be able to tell the definition of the nouns and they will be able to tell uh, five examples of the nouns, so this is achievable within the same class. So your objectives should be achievable also. Our next thing is realistic. Realistic means these things, uh, number one, should be related to your topic. Number two, they should be related to the real life actions. They should have somehow a role in your real life. And uh, these objectives should be achievable should be realistic, should be measurable, should be specific. If these objectives are not specific, if these objectives are not measurable, this, if these objectives are not achievable, it means that these objectives are not realistic. Realistic are those things which can be achieved within the same class. So it means you're going to write down your objectives in such a way that they are achievable within the same class. Our next thing is uh, T and T is time bound. So time bound is really important because most of the teachers they normally talk about the time management is actually a big problem in the classroom. I have heard loads of teachers saying that when we do activities in the classroom, uh, loads of time is spent up. It means that they don't really uh, plan their time for that stage of the lesson. So the last thing in the smart is T and that is time bound. So time bound means your objectives should be achievable within the 40 minutes period you are going to spend today in the classroom. So if your SLOs can be achieved within 40 minutes, it means that you will have to divide your that SLO within 2 days, 3 days and 4 days. So deciding the time for your lesson plan or for your objectives or making it time bound, the purpose is that you should be able to decide beforehand that how much time you're going to spend on your uh, this SLO today and how much time you will spend tomorrow. And at the same time, uh, you are going to divide this SLO in the different stages of the lesson plan and we have discussed the different stages of lesson plan in the video we have done before. So uh, when you divide your lesson plan into different stages, it means that you have divided your SLO into the different stages also. So at each stage, you are going to decide how much time you are going to spend on, the, uh, on this part of the SLO. For example, if you're going to do the lead-in, how much time you're going to spend on lead-in, then you're going to work on the activities. Either these are uh, individual activities or these are group activities. So you are definitely going to decide how much time you're going to spend of uh, individual activity and then uh, group activity. And at the same time, it's very important to decide that how much time you're going to spend on the assessment stage. So these things uh, we are going to discuss next. So when you're deciding your SLOs, your SLOs should be uh, number one specific, number two measurable, number three achievable, number four realistic, and number five time bound. So we just saw there how we can make the SLOs smart. People say that only the people who are smart, they can make the smart SLOs. And the people who make the smart SLOs, they say no. The people who make smart SLOs, actually they are the smart people and they are the smart.